Hey, uh, S. Dave here. One of my, uh, S. Dave backyard training gigs. It's been quite some time. I've been up and down, all around. Here I am, nonetheless. Dig this. I just thought the two hatchet strikes would be like a cool intro, man. I hope it worked. Anyway, I thought it was cool. That's why I did it. Anyway, dig this. I'm specifically going to explain my personal loadout, my gear loadout, pistol loadout, all right? I use a good quality belt, Talon Tactical, as a matter of fact, um, as well as Talon Tactical Basic 8th inch thick Kydex frictional gear. It's just basic frictional gear. Uh, dig this. Mike Benedict has since passed away. Uh, a cat named Brian Murphy, who worked for Mike and was responsible for producing gear for Mike, uh, is balancing things right now, and uh, he very well may pick up the torch and carry Talon Tactical, but that's not been decided yet. Uh, the reason I put that out there is if you want an S. Dave rig, it can be made available, but you have to interact uh, directly with Brian and go from there. And I can provide you with his contact information. You get a hold of me offline later. All right, so dig this. Coming back, you got to have a good quality gun belt. I don't know what kind of buckle this is called. I just call it, you know, the cool guy buckle. But um, what is extremely important about your gear is body placement, okay? And it's not just body placement, but it's consistent body placement of your gear. Uh, your reserve mag holders, as well as your holster and what other uh, types of gear you may have added to the pile. Um, but I'm talking strictly of my pistol gear setup. Now, just looking at it, let me just take a quick snapshot, okay? I've got four reserve mag holders on my left side, on my right side of fire. However, I only have three reserve mags in place, and that's cool. On my right side, as a right-sided firer, I have a Glock G45 running night fission night sights. They're awesome. And uh, that's the only modification I've done to the pistol. And this is my go-to blaster. Um, I use all Glock OEM stuff, period. There's a few uh, secret S. Dave mods that I do specifically for me. Uh, I don't readily share them because they don't work for most anybody or everybody out there. Um, but um, dig it. Coming back to one of the key issues of body placement of your gear is your pants and your belt loops. Don't work around that. You control what you wear. So make sure in your clothing selection mode, you evaluate how the belt loops are laid out on the pants and how that may or may not influence you securing your gear to your body consistently. All right? All right, dig this. I have two mag holes. I'm going to go ahead and slide forward the holster. Um, I have R1 and R2, right one, right two, worn in front of my holster. Now, from first glance, that may appear as if it would interfere with my draw stroke, but rest assured, 
if your technique is pure, uh, there is absolutely no reason to deconflict any kind of interaction between the pistol and those reserve mags unless you are in fact out there flapping. Um, shouldn't have it. All right, so now dig this. Let's talk about the reserve mags, okay? But before I do, when I first started the vid, I had my kit set up as if I were loaded and ready to go. However, for the sake of the vid, all of my reserve mags are empty, as well as the pistol's mag is empty, and of course, the pistol is unloaded and cleared itself. Uh, I, and there is actually no live ammo on my body that will function in this 9mm Glock G45. All right, so dig this. If you remember, I have one open mag pouch, which is the rearmost or fourth reserve mag holder on my left side. Well, if for any reason that you are out and about and it becomes necessary that you unload and clear your pistol, that reserve mag is for the mag that you have in the pistol. And that way, uh, under the circumstances of re you know the requirement being your pistol being unloaded and cleared in the holster, you in fact have a reserve mag holder for all of your magazines. Now let's let let's take a look at what happens when you go into action. Okay, now dig this. Just from a common sense standpoint, if I am in a, in an initial loading type situation. Like, uh, say I'm part of a major organization, I am inside of a structure, the team room, whatever, I'm unloaded and cleared, but before I exit the building, I'm going to go hot. All right, well, what I'm going to do, I'll draw my pistol, apply muzzle awareness, and I will go to my rearmost mag. The one that is actually the most difficult to get to. And then I'll charge my pistol, make sure it's properly loaded, ready to go, and holster it. Now, here's what happens when you execute that initial loading action and free up that fourth reserve mag holder that transforms that mag holder and gives you the ability to manage your reduced capacity magazines. For example, let's say we're out and about, circumstances require that you mix it up a little bit, you suddenly realize that you have time, opportunity, cover, and concealment respectively, or you have additional personnel or security to focus on manipulating your weapons and topping them off. Well, I'm going to take that reduced capacity magazine and secure it in that rearmost pouch. And then I'm going to take that next capacity mag, insert seat and lock it into the gun, thereby topping it off. You want to make sure you've got a chamber cartridge and holster and secure. Now what I have is two high capacity mags and an empty mag holder and a reduced capacity magazine, okay? So what happens is as you cycle through, now granted, uh, you're going to be caught up in a protracted event were this to actually uh, become a requirement to cycle through this many mags, but uh, dig it. Uh, what's your job? Uh, what'd you sign up for? Think about it. So, coming back on point. Why do I have the two reserve mags in front of the holster on the right side of my body? Okay, now dig this. Let's talk about the left side because there's a transfer technology or common sense 
that applies to the right shot. <clears throat> no matter what your environment is, I highly recommend that you carry at least two reserve magazines. Okay? The responsibility of the first reserve magazine is to replace the magazine that's in the pistol were it to malfunction or were you to shoot it empty you know um, but what happens and that, and that's cool you know that's what the respons primary responsibility of the first reserve magazine is is to replace that mag top the pistol off be ready to rock and roll so dig it my name's Dave Harrington, not Jesus Christ. What if in the event I had made the decision to top my pistol off and for some reason, be it adverse conditions or whatever, I lose control of this first magazine trying to get it into the gun, my training and conditioning kicks in and I immediately go to the next available reserve mag. Whether it's a high capacity or a reduced capacity mag, it does not matter. You need bullets in the gun, and you need bullets now. And then you can fool around, provided you're still alive, to recover the magazine that you dropped later. Okay? But that is the reason to have at least two reserve mags. So dig this. If that is true, then what happens... Um, Let's just stick with uh, the left side reserve mag thing, all right? What happens when your body position changes? What happens when your firing position dictates that you be on your left side covering up your reserves, but you need ammo now? It's going to be that much more difficult to make it happen. Okay, so dig this. One primary reason for having these two mags in front of the holster is it divides and places ammo on both sides of my body. And that is in direct support of my body position or firing posi physical firing position as it relates to how I choose to respond or conduct myself in action. Um, so dig this, there's also a dual tasking. I would call it kind of a secondary responsibility thing. Uh, were I to be disabled on my left side, I can now function, for example, I'll turn so you can see what I'm doing here, for example, um, my left side's disabled, I'm working right side only, comes time to load, I simply use the holster to secure the pistol, like I've done umpteen times, get a reserve mag into the pistol, chamber a cartridge, and continue to rock. And provided that works for me, I would have one additional mag in support of right side only capability. And when you break it down like that um, and task it out, you really don't have that much ammo, re respectively thinking. But if you just, on first look, you're like, whoa, man, that dude's like packing a blaster and six reserve mags. What's up with that? Uh, it depends on your background and experience. What do you know? What do you understand? What environments have you been placed in in which the decisions you make and actions that you take ensure your survival or, you know, allow you to come back and do it all over again? All right, so dig it real quick. S day break. I came up with this and I decided that this is going to, this is how it's going to be based on the amount of time that I spent out and about in Africa. Um, this was my minimum 
go to the bathroom rig. So, and it kind of stuck with me. Uh, I get asked periodically, hey man, you know, that really looks uncomfortable. But um, the fact of the matter is, is it's not uncomfortable. It's a very comforting because I know, certainly I would like to think here in the States, CONUS, I would have uh, enough reserve ammo on my person to be able to fire and maneuver my way out of anything that I could expect to encounter here in South Tampa, Florida. Or, you know, like when I'm road tripping. Uh, road, but road tripping is a different thing. I shouldn't even have brought that up. But that's what I got. S. Dave Rig, um, consistent body placement. Make sure, you know, don't choke yourself off, but your equipment should be snug to your body. Remember, it's frictional equipment. So when you adjust, for example, let me expand on that real quick. Uh, when I adjust my first mag pouch, it is for the adjustment, the frictional adjustment on the mag holder is for that body position. And my adjustment for each respective holder, which is uh, engraved with a number, so you can't mess it up, uh, I have to remember and maintain those specific body adjustments on that mag holder. And remember, especially using frictional gear, you have to remember OEM tolerances, okay? Glock can say all mag bodies are the same. The no fact of the matter is there's a fudge factor in there somewhere. So, you know, some mags may feel good. Some mags may feel too tight. Uh, some mags you might not be able to use at all. But these are the kind of things uh, that you have to shine a light on because they weigh extremely heavy on your ability to perform uh, you know, with confidence in your kit and equipment, you know, and trust your gear. And that's all I got. I'm out.